sejahtera untuk kita semua. Selamat datang di acara kuliah umum Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya dengan tema keamanan dan keberlanjutan sumber daya alam Indonesia. Yang terhormat Rektor Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya, Bapak Dr. Radis Haji Bambang Pasono Ehen, yang terhormat para wakil rektor, para rekan, dan seluruh sipitas akademika Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya, yang terhormat para wakil Duta Besar Negara Sahabat, terlebih khusus Ambasador Kompara Kuala Indonesia, His Excellency, Mr. Sesan, Esteban Krion. Sekali lagi, atas nama Panitia, kami mengucapkan selamat datang dalam acara kuliah Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya dengan tema keamanan dan keberlanjutan sumber daya alam Indonesia. Bapak Ibu hadirin serta kuliah umum sekalian, acara pada pagi hari ini akan dibuka dengan sambutan Rektor Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya, dilanjutkan dengan paparan dari Ambassador of Paraguay Indonesia, Renewable Energy and the Indonesian Potential dilanjutkan dengan pembicaraan selanjutnya yaitu Bapak Sukoco Coko Hatmojo, Mayor Jenderal TNI Ibu Nawilawan, Wakil Ketua Satu DPR Radio Veteran Republik Indonesia membawakan materi tentang jiwa kebangsaan sebagai sarana mewujudkan keamanan sumber daya alam Indonesia. Hadirin sekalian, marilah kita bersama-sama mendengarkan sambutan dari Rektor Universitas Bayangkara Jakarta Raya kepada yang terhormat Bapak Dr. Andes Haji Bapak Tansyono MM kami bersilakan. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi dalam acara kuliah semua. Yang mulia kita besar para kuai untuk Indonesia. Yang mulia para kuai besar atau waktu besar dari negara sahabat. Yang kami hormati. Bapak Mayor Jenderal TNI Sukoco Cepurat Mojo Yang kami hormati eh, Kepala Bagian Komentar Interpol Kemudian para Wakil Rektor Para Dekan Khususnya dari ibu anak-anakku masih sekalian berbahagia dan seluruh tamu undangan yang kami pandangkan pada pagi hari ini kubaran saya mendengarkan acara kuliah umum jadi tadi saya akan membawa acara dengan tema keamanan dan kelanjutan keberdaya alam Indonesia Bersyukur kita bahwa yang mulia duta besar dari Paraguay berkenan untuk hadir dan memberikan e, informasi, masukan dan ceramahnya kepada mahasiswa Ubara yang hadir di sini adalah mahasiswa dari lima fakultas, fakultas hukum, fakultas ekonomi. Fakultas Teknik, Fakultas Psikologi, dan Fakultas Ilmu Komunikasi. Tapi separuh diantaranya adalah dari Fakultas Teknik yang berkenaan atau berkaitan dengan tema ramah pada pagi hari ini. 
bahwa kegiatan perkuliah di Sabu ini memang kita programkan untuk lebih memberikan muatan-muatan yang sifatnya global. Kemudian dikaitkan dengan uh, sumber daya alam di negeri Indonesia tersebut ini. Dalam kaitan energi ini sangat penting, oleh karenanya mohon kepada uh, khususnya ada yang dibuat anak mahasiswa ini supaya menyimak dengan sungguh-sungguh kesempatan yang sungguh sangat langka ini. Demikian juga kepada Bapak Mayor Jenderal TNI Sukojo Cokramojo. Kali ini beliau juga akan menyampaikan beliau uh, umum atau ceramah jiwa kebangsaan sebagai sarana mewujudkan keamanan sumber daya alam Indonesia. Jadi ini akan sangat terkait dan sekali lagi saya harapkan kepada ada yang mahasiswa supaya betul e, mengikuti dengan bersama sampai e, selesai karena kita akan juga e, melaksanakan diskusi e, tanya jawab kemudian nanti juga akan kita minta suatu e, paper atau makalah-makalah yang berkaitan dengan ini yang berkaitan dengan perkuliahan dengan penelitian dengan uh, pengabdian dari masyarakat ini semuanya dalam rangka melaksanakan tri dharma perguruan tinggi kepada yang mulia atau besar dari para buah ini secara khusus saya katakan terima kasih kemudian berkenan untuk menyampaikan kuliah ini kepada Bapak Majen TNI Sukojo Sobat Bojo juga sangat terima kasih Bapak telah hadir di sini mudah-mudahan dapat berjalan dengan e, lancar dan mencapai suatu sasaran atau target yang kita harapkan yaitu beban atau wawasan teknologi di bidang energi dan masalah kawasan kebangsaan yang semuanya harus mendasari uh, dalam menuju ke uh, era yang lebih maju lagi atau era global di mana tantangan-tantangan semakin nyata di hadapan kita untuk berkompetisi untuk bersaing dalam keterbukaan sesuai dengan uh, kemajuan ilmu kota dan teknologi jadi selamat untuk mengikuti beliau umum sekali lagi memahal bahwa ini dalam pengalaman yang sudah paling berkenan dan kami sekali lagi juga terima kasih semoga Tuhan yang kuasa Allah SWT meridui semua kegiatan kita pada hari ini kepada ilmu kita ya wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Menyampaikan Fakultas Teknik Dr. Evi Siti Sofia kepada para pembicara kami persilakan untuk mengambil rumah. Selamat pagi uh, semuanya. Uh, our distinguished guest, uh, the student at the back, welcome to open lecture in Bayangkara Jaya University. So today. We have uh, two speakers, and we are lucky that we have uh, the His Excellency, the Ambassador of uh, Paraguay to Indonesia, and also Bapak Sukojo. And we are going to talk about renewable energy. That's the theme. So, Bapak Duta Besar uh, Paraguay adalah uh, has personal interest in the renewable energy issue. And we're going to see the uh, talk and video and everything about uh, what happened in Paraguay in terms of using the renewable energy. And also we have Bapak Sokocho who will talk about uh, more into our attitude as uh, Indonesian. Ya, khususnya untuk para mahasiswa, uh, bagaimana kita bersikap, uh, bagaimana kita menyikapi adanya uh, isu tentang renewable atau sustainable.
renewable energy ini coba yang belum uh, paham isunya apa di google dulu biar kita kira-kira agak nyambung dengan pembicaraan uh, dua uh, pembicara kita hari ini ya yeah? oke okay, so we can uh, start with uh, Bapak yang pertama ya yeah. so you will need about 40 minutes for the talk or one hour one hour for the talk and then we it will be followed by a discussion and then the second uh, uh, speaker will talk about also 40 minutes yeah thank you then the time is yours assalamualaikum
kilometer away. So we are very far from the ocean. So Paraguayan people are Mediterranean. Also the mind of the Paraguayan. That's why you don't meet Paraguayan abroad. Because Paraguay love to live in Paraguay. Because we don't have machete, we don't have uh, tsunami, we don't have volcanoes, we don't have... It's a paradise. Really, Paraguay paradise. But my angel in Bamboo. Sorry. And the ratio of Juanita in Paraguay, three to one. Three Juanita, one man. So somebody has six Juanita, because I took it in Malaysia.
Paraguay, poor country compared to Brazil. So Paraguay said, okay, let's do a deal. Paraguay put half of the river and you put everything. So they get everything, I mean all the construction price, uh, they took the best engineer of Paraguay also to build the electric dam. So we built with Brazil the biggest hydroelectric dam in the world in energy production. Not the, the biggest one in the world in has a hydroelectric is in China, three gorge. But still this one smaller than three gorge is the number of is a lot of power. Okay, we have that times 20 in this world. Okay, Paraguay today use less than three turbines. Less than three, already know. So we pay less than half of the price you pay here in Indonesia for kilowatt hour. Less than half. Why? Because it's renewable, gratis, you know, plenty, no pollution, so we have to do something in Indonesia. Like I said to you, I came here from the country seeing this, I saw the construction of this, of this uh, mighty dam, and I come here and I see where are the, the power here taken from the ocean. They don't go to the ocean here. This is the biggest archipelago in the world. How they don't have a turbine in the entire here? Why they don't take it from the, from the way also? You will see Brazil how advanced it is and you will see a video that you never watched before because they just patented this idea from Brazil, 100% Brazilian idea, and then they take in energy from the way of the ocean. That you have meant Brazil only, and you go back, back there. Brazil has 6,500 kilometers of coastal to get energy from the wind. You know how much Indonesia has? Again, 6,500 kilometers Brazil, Indonesia, 55,000 kilometers of shore. Okay, in Brazil, way ahead of Indonesia in, in developing this turbine and taking advantage of the water. So, brother, we have to do something. You are the future because you are the future engineer. You are the one that we think, and also they told me, our lawyer here, we need everybody to revolution of the mind. Like by Joko we say, revolution of the mind. We have to go to the ocean because Indonesia is the biggest archipelago in the world. So we have to think, why still coal mining, diesel, in other tools, if you say gratis, in the ocean, go to the ocean, you belong to the ocean, so go to the ocean. Like I was thinking yesterday in our flag, our flag, red, white, and blue. Why we put blue? Because we don't have ocean, so we like to have something that represents water, so we put the white, the blue. Indonesia only red and white, okay, love. but the blue is in the ocean. So use that blue ocean to put. And I will give you the ideas, one of them, or some ideas that you, you can do here and how advanced is the study here and many people doesn't know. So we have to wake up. This is a more than a technical speech, I would like to wake you up of the potential that Indonesia has. For me, Bule coming here and see this beautiful country, the Indonesia so happy and doing everything. The other day, I was in the machet. My superior there and there, machet. So stop, a motorcycle car, two guys go around, and then boom, and so. They complete the engine down with the pipe everything. And then what? Your hand out, open the, the seat, and then the 
my experience with my wife, we went to Raja Ampak. We flew to Soran, Soran? Soran. 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 Okay. Soran, a bow. A bow. A spirit bow. I saw four ending. Papa, a bit over, a bit over. How many AP? 300 AP is one of us. Oh my God, 1,200 AP. Yes, Papa. Okay. Bagus, let's go. And then, whoa, from so on. Suddenly, an island here, an island here, and a stray here, very big. And then the boat, ah, 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 oh, 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 my God. I say to my wife, let me talk to the captain upstairs. I went up there. Capitan, what happened? Papa, see the current here? So strong, the current. Oh my God, really? And well, all the time here. 12, 12 hours go this way, 12 hours this way. Because they fell on the moon. Because they tied out. It's the on the moon, as you know. So, we approach our uh, beautiful bungalow, uh, hotel, resort. I count 16 bungalow, beautiful, and then beautiful mountain, green mountain. Oh my God! So good. But here on, on this side and on this side, black smoke. And I say, Ibu owner, what is that? Hey, Jensen, ambassador, say you have life. Oh my God, Ibu, why don't you put a turbine here? See the stream, how fast go? And she said, what is a turbine? And she told me the diesel in Papua is the more expensive diesel in all Indonesia is in Papua. Very expensive. You know how much cost per Oran a trip from Sorong to by boat to Raja Ampat? Five juta. One way. Five juta. More than the ticket I pay by by, by air airline to Sorong. Five hours flight to Sorong. This is 45 minutes. But because is the, the, the tidal current is so strong there. So we have to open our mind to the, to the ocean. Okay, pass the... Okay, this is the Paraguay River. See how big it is? The Paraguay River, one of the big uh, as you see in Bogota in here, where the photo takes to the south. And this is very important you to know, because Brazil, when thinking about energy, they saw about the Iguas the Iguazu Fall is the biggest water pour, I mean, uh, fall water pouring per second, the biggest in the world. The water pour here is nine times the Niagara Falls per second. So Brazil was thinking to put the hydroelectric dam here because already have the, the different on level, they don't need to, to flow nothing. So, but what? They don't have water the whole year. You know we have plenty. You have to have raw material to make the two pies here, the two pies be. So you have electricity. Okay, in here, I was here. This is, go one more. I think, okay, follow. This is what it will produce last year, 98.6 uh, terawatt hour. That is a big amount. People that know about electricity here, they will know that it's a big amount for one hydro. It's, it's the biggest in the world. Three World China produce 100,000 megawatt hour less than it. Okay, go. Okay. This is the uh, Itaipu production since uh, in service from 2007 until 2013. And let me tell you something. 2013, the production of Itaipu was like Itaipu 20 turbines. But East, last year is is like that 16.08 to combine work at full potential 24 hours a day, 365 days a year without interruption. So we get that number that I told you in gigawatt. Okay? It's like that. What happened with the other four? Because we need to serve the turbine, uh, has to uh, clean the, the conduct of the of many coming here, so they have to stop sometimes the turbine. But it's like this, and they produce this quantity of energy. So, in Taipu, uh, install power is 14,000 megawatt, but it's 
equal to 11,259 megawatts working without interruption every second during one year. Okay, now we, go, we compare to Trigor China. Okay, Trigor China produced about this, um, less, right, but about this. Okay, what happened with them? They have 72 turbines. 72 turbines. How many turbines we need to make this? 16. So, 72 is exactly half. So, in Trigor China, they only can use half of the installed capacity to produce the same quantity. So, the, 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 let's say the performance of Itaipu is 80%, in Trigor China, 50%. So that's another good thing. This, this uh, 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 white area here is the water that we have to spill. If we produce energy with this water, we get this as well. But we're not counting this. Because we have to spill. If we don't spill, it will overflow. I will show you a video from Taiwan, a dam, a hydro dam, that uh, when a typhoon comes there, uh, if you don't have a spillway, you can. Uh, Kaput. And then if, they, they, if, they, if, they, if the water breaks this one, then it's going to flow the whole country, we kill a lot of people, a lot of disaster. So you have to have a escape water in case you have excess of water. So I will show you what happened when the, and the way that is in Taipu is here, is like this, in order to the water, the big water, this is 400, 300 meters. This, no, 400, 390 meters. 400 meters long, this one. Okay, and then the water will I need in order not to uh, make any erosion on the on the on the bottom of the river. But the bottom of the river is this stone. I took it this stone. Go up again from one more in here. From here. I took this stone. I will pass you. So this is the basal. So any any erosion is very difficult because it's very hard. So this is very important, that's why they choose this place to do. Okay, Paraguay not only has the Itaipu Dam, but also has Yacireta Dam. Okay, Yacireta Dam, we share in the same river, Paraná, down the river with Argentina, where we have 20 turbines, 155 megawatts each, so we get this one, total. Okay, and then we have our own small uh, uh, hydro called Akarai Dam, since 1981. So Paraguay installed hydroelectric power. We have 7,000, half of it I put belong to us, plus half of the Asilita with Argentina, plus this one belong to us. So we have this installed power for 6.5 million inhabitants. That is a lot of power. And this is 100% clean renewable energy. There is no one smoke in Paraguay. Because we get all from the river, all from hydro. Okay, so this one gives us 1.35 kilowatt installed energy per habitat. That means 6.5 times more than Indonesia per habitat. We have, as a small country, we are. With the actual energy installed capacity of Indonesia, only 38.5 million. Of, that means 50% of the population could have too much Paraguay. Only you can get. And when we have, when we say the total, the, the, the actual energy style capacity of Indonesia, 91% is fossil, is not renewable, is damage to the environment. This is 100% clean energy. In Indonesia, 91% Tidapapus. So we have to go to the ocean. One more. Okay. We're talking very quick about Brazil. Why Brazil is important? Because Brazil has ocean. Because Brazil has 200 million inhabitants. So Indonesia must follow Brazil sample. Okay. Not only on Brazil, half of Itaipuda have provided 17% of what they need. Itaipuda really Brazil were interested in giving energy to one city only, Sao Paulo, 24 million inhabitants. Because Itaipu. If in Paraguay we switch off the, our turbine, 
San Pablo and Capu, no like before maybe they kill us, right? But in Paraguay, we need all the excess of energy we are not using, we sell to Brazil. Okay, so, uh, actually in operation, in operation, Brazil has 79 hydro towers with this installed power. That means they all by themselves four times this plus half with Paraguay. That is the potential of Brazil because they anticipate the problem that they will grow, grow, grow. That's why the industry in Brazil goes so fast and they are so big because they know that the base of everything is energy. Energy for us, food, and energy for, for us to uh, develop the industry. Under construction, for more hydro because they AP anticipate the problem. So they will have another thing. My coming question is, in my opinion, according to your explanation, and when you talk about Bali, uh, Choron, and North Sumatra, so how many rivers do you have to look already that has potential to build an extra base to uh, increase our electricity uh, resources in Indonesia? This is the first question. And then the second, I think also it has been when to North Sumatra, especially to Lake Toba. So how do you think the people and government to establish the water in total to increase economic people and then to rest up their economic life. I think that's my question. Thank you for your question. Okay, thank you for your word, Papa. The main thing is uh, I'm in love with Indonesia, that's number one. And the most powerful energy in the world is love. Let me tell you, get love in when you will see how powerful it is to be in love. Oh my God, that's the number of human energy. That's why I'm here, brothers and sisters, because I love this country. And like I said, at Mule, I came here four years ago, and I see so rich country, but many poor people. How? Tidapak rules. The rich people have to become middle class. The middle class have to become rich, and the rich have to become richer. This is the, the, the path that Indonesia has to follow. Because you have all the resources. You have the people, numero uno. The, 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 the bad people here, Pinta Zikali. And then you have the resources. But you not do it. So that's why I say, my last word, just do it. You have to realize that you don't have to let the thing happen anymore. You have to make it happen. Okay? That's why I'm here, brother, because I'm in love with this country, so I feel the energy of the love for Indonesia. And going back to your uh, question, the first question about the rivers, the problem in Indonesia doesn't have a, a suitable rivers uh, and the size to make a hike like this for the but uh, let's say in Papua you have a very big river. But the problem is, what happened in, in Papua? You can be the biggest hydroelectric dam in the Southeast Asia. You can be in the river in Papua. In Bahasa, Mexico, Indonesia has so many natural resources, 
no prometí nada más ahora, estoy muy eficiente. Ok, so, eh, to make the, the, the efficiency, you have to go to gym, because, like I said, coal, oil, diesel will disappear. We know that. It will go more and more expensive. Now, it's very down, the cheap, the price. But we go up again. And we go up again, we go up again. We now we come up, because the less and less and coal, and for the coal mining from Indonesia, we disappear. So the only thing that we have secured is hydro, from this, wind, solar, and also, and also solar, expensive, but can do it. Developing country, you are a member of the G20 already. You can perform much better going to the ocean. Like my job is, go to the ocean and get the energy in order to do
Jepang memerlukan minyak pelumas untuk perang. Jadi sampai sekarang saya punya jeruk batu yang dulu begitu manisnya gak ada dihabiskan oleh Jepang untuk minyak. Kemudian juga yang saya alasan alasan kita harus mempertahankan ini adalah negeri kita sendiri. Negeri kita sendiri itu kita peroleh tidak gampang kemerdekaan. Saya akan cerita salah satu kejadian tahun 49 waktu diadakan konferensi meja bundar di Rigi Belanda. Ketua delegasi kita adalah wakil presiden Muhammad Hatta. Begitu serat perjanjian itu sehingga ketua orang yang mengawasi perundingan itu yaitu delegasi Amerika itu mengancam mengancam negeri Belanda dan mengancam Indonesia dia mengatakan itu sudah bulan kira-kira Oktober dia katakan ini sudah mau Desember saya sudah mau pulang ke Amerika untuk bernatal sama keluarga saya kalau Belanda sama Indonesia tidak bisa selesai akan saya ambil tindakan negeri Belanda akan saya tutup Marshall Plan. Marshall Plan itu adalah rencana membangun kembali negara-negara yang karena perang rusak. Waktu itu negeri Belanda dijajah empat tahun oleh Jerman. Itu dia akan dibangun kembali dengan Marshall Plan ini. Amerika ngancam Belanda kalau kamu tidak lekas beresin sama Indonesia perkara penyerahan kebolehan itu saya akan cabut masyarakat dan Indonesia sendiri juga begitu Indonesia sendiri kalau tidak bisa membahaskan ini <tuh> akan saya usulkan dijadikan protektorat protektorat itu negeri yang dilindungi tidak merdeka protektorat dari PBB dua dikangkat itu Padahal soalnya apa? Soalnya adalah soal TNI. Wakil Presiden sebelum berangkat ke negeri Belanda atau Indonesia itu ketemu Panglima Besar Sudirman yang sudah sakit di rumah sakit. Itu Sudirman pesan, pesan kepada Bunga agar supaya nanti jadi Republik Indonesia Serikat pusat daripada tentaranya angkatan perangnya itu supaya TNI Belanda tidak mau Belanda mengatakan pusatnya itu harus tentara dia, tentara kiri ini membuat dua bulan padat hanya soal itu saja tetapi dengan ancaman Amerika itu akhirnya tetap jadi kompromi. Komprominya apa? Komprominya jadi nanti angkatan perang Republik Indonesia Serikat pusatnya adalah TNI. Kini dibubarkan. Komprominya berada. Komprominya Indonesia apa? Indonesia itu harus bayar perang apa tahun di sini? Bayar pada Belanda. Jadi Belanda yang perang, tapi yang membayar adalah Indonesia. Semua untuk memperoleh jadinya Republik Indonesia Serikat. Jadilah dan dibayar oleh Indonesia. Walaupun telah kira-kira waktu 80 persen sudah terbayar, diputus sama Presiden Soekarno karena Belanda tidak mengembalikan dia kembali. Maksud saya begini bahwa kemerdekaan kita dan hak pilih yang berbarengan dan kemerdekaan sumber daya alam ini itu harus kita jaga saya sekarang tidak berbicara kepada anggota DPR anggota DPR itu yang sekarang kemungkinan bisa membuat negara kita dengan menerima uang untuk diri sendiri membuat undang-undang 
untuk menjadikan kepemilikan kita sendiri. Anda para mahasiswa ini sekarang, saya minta memegang teguh ini jangan sampai terjadi, jangan sampai. Berbarengan dengan ini, itu harus disertai, harus disertai pengenalan. Apa itu namanya sumber daya Tadi oleh Pak Buta Besar disebutkan salah satu sumber alam kita yang hebat adalah apa? Lautan. Lautan antar pulau. Itu menurut undang-undang tahun 80 sekian itu sudah diakui oleh dunia. Itu hak mutlak kita. Jadi presiden kita sekarang ini berani mengatakan kalau orang masuk sini ngambil ikan. Itu kampanye akan kita tergelamkan. Itu berani karena undang-undang internasional sudah mengakui. Laut itu punya kita atas nama si kakek kakek tua yang berapa puluh tujuh juta bis pagi saya berapa puluh tujuh juta berapa puluh tujuh juta Masuk ke lubang itu tidak akan berlaku. Bukan terjaga. 
pada waktu DPR menyusun beberapa undang-undang itu pemilikannya itu katut besar. Ini juga presiden mengundang untuk investasi. Tetapi investasi ini belum tentu memiliki. Yang kita jaga investasi yang masuk itu itu kita jaga. Kita awasi. Sekarang siapa yang mengawasi presiden? Siapa? Anda. Anda yang mengawasi presiden. Sekarang negara kita sudah sedemikian demokrasinya sehingga Anda bisa mengawasi presiden. Kalau sedikit saja kelihatan senang, Anda bisa mengatakan itu kepada DPR. Kalau DPR-nya konyol, DPR-nya pun bisa serang. Itu kamu. Saya dulu perang 4 tahun di gunung begitu itu untuk ini. Untuk hak Anda bisa. Ini yang saya minta. Yang saya minta Anda melindungi dengan cara demokrasi kita. Ya, ini yang saya maksudkan. Jadi setiap gerak pemerintah, setiap gerak DPR yang berkuasa ini Anda pelajari cara dari kan muncul di orang orang itu bisa. Itu yang saya maksudkan. Melindungi itu. itu. Menunggu secara demokrasi itu adalah kita sudah mempunyai apa namanya peringkat perangkat perangkat demokrasi. Demokrasi. Acara uh, acara utama bisa kita selesaikan sampai di sini. Tapi untuk selanjutnya acara akan dikembalikan kepada MC. Terima kasih silakan Ibu Ika. Lagi berikan aplaus yang kemudian. Pada waktu 
waktu DPR menyusun beberapa undang-undang itu pemilikannya itu katut sana. Ini juga presiden mengundang untuk investasi. Tetapi investasi ini belum tentu memiliki. Yang kita jaga investasi yang masuk itu itu kita jaga. Kita awasi. Sekarang siapa yang awasi presiden? Siapa? Anda. Anda yang awasi presiden. Sekarang negara kita sudah sedemikian demokrasinya sehingga Anda bisa mengawasi presiden. Kalau sedikit saja kelihatan sana, Anda bisa mengatakan itu kepada DPR. Kalau DPR yang konyol, DPR yang pun kita serang. Itu baru. Saya dulu pernah nampak tahu di gunung begitu itu untuk ini, untuk hak Anda bisa. Ini yang saya minta. Yang saya minta Anda melindungi dengan cara demokrasi kita. Ya, ini yang saya maksudkan. Jadi setiap gerak pemerintah, setiap gerak DPR yang berkuasa ini Anda pelajari sampai hari kan muncul di orang-orang. Itu bisa. Itu yang saya maksudkan. Melindungi itu. itu. Menurut secara demokrasi itu adalah kita sudah mempunyai apa namanya peringkat perangkat perangkat demokrasi. Demokrasi. Acara uh, acara utama bisa kita selesaikan sampai di sini. Tapi untuk selanjutnya acara akan dikembalikan kepada MC. Terima kasih silakan diberikan.